All right, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the Lineweaver Burke plot, and also called, rather not the and, the also called the double reciprocal plot. Okay, so in the last two videos, I mentioned the hyperbolic equation, and I'm going to write it down here again. Um, and it was V equals uh, V max times the substrate concentration over KM plus the substrate concentration. And I mentioned that if you know the substrate, con or excuse me, if you know the V max and the KM, you just plug in a substrate concentration and get the, the velocity. But this was a hyperbolic equation. And I don't know about you guys, but back when I took math and I first learned hyperbolas, I was scared to death. Because um, they're scary. They're tough to deal with. They're annoying to deal with. They're not as easy as uh, some other things in math. But um, what we can do is we can transform this hyperbolic equation into something much easier to work with. So let's do that. So if we, if we do this, if we involve this idea of a double reciprocal, we're going to take both of these values, the V and then this whole value here, and reciprocate them, right? Flip them over. So one divided by velocity and one divided by this whole thing. So this thing just gets flipped over. So what we end up getting is we get 1 over the velocity equals the km plus the substrate concentration over Vmax times the substrate concentration. And now what I'm going to do to manipulate it further is to separate this because uh, this km and substrate concentration both have this common denominator. So what I can do is say km um, over the Vmax times 1 over the substrate concentration. You'll see that I've separated that and you'll see why in just a moment. Um, plus the substrate concentration over Vmax times the substrate concentration. What we have now is we can simplify this portion here by knocking off these substrate concentrations because they cancel out. And then what we end up being left with is the following. We get 1 over V equals Km times Vmax, or not Km times Vmax, Km over Vmax times 1 over the substrate concentration plus what we're left with here, which is 1 over the Vmax. So now, this thing here is an important equation. It's specifically called the Lineweaver-Burke equation. And some of you probably already see why this thing is awesome relative to the hyperbolic equation. And the reason why is because it's a line, right? This is y equals mx plus b. That's actually the reason I separated this 1 over s out. So now what we're doing is if we can plot this line on a, on a, you know, uh, a plane, and you know where y will the y values will be able, one over the vo velocity of the reaction and one over the substrate concentration will be the x values. Um, so let's actually see how that would look. So that would look a little something like this. Let's see if I can make this as neat as possible. And of course I can't make it that great, but it'll do. Anyway, we're only going to be concerned with the first two quadrants because our lines sort of look like this. We have an x-intercept and a y-intercept and the so this is the y-intercept here and this is the x-intercept here and um, the reason why I noted those particular points is because they're they're particularly of, of importance um, the y-axis like I mentioned is 1 over 1 over v so we got 1 over v here and the x-axis is 1 over the substrate concentration right which makes sense right if it's the double double reciprocal plot this is coming from that initial graph that we that we drew where we plotted velocity uh, on the y-axis and substrate concentration on the x-axis. So here we just flip them both over and we happen to get a line which makes things a lot easier. So these two uh, x-intercepts are pretty important and this is why. So if we have um, if we have here this y-intercept is actually equal to 1 over the v-max right here. This b is the y-intercept right so what we essentially have is we have the y-intercept is equal to 1 over the v-max so if we plot this graph then and we find the y-intercept we can calculate the v-max specifically all we have to do is rearrange the equation right here to v-max is equal to 1 over the y-intercept okay so that's all we'd have to do if we know the y-intercept then we basically know the v-max the x-intercept is actually going to be equal to 1, excuse me, negative 1 over the km. And that negative is actually very, very important. 
So if we wanted, if we wanted to, and I'll show you why in just a second, the km essentially will be equal to negative 1 over the x-intercept. Now, why is this negative value even here? The reason why is because notice that this x-intercept is in the second quadrant. So that's going to be a negative value for that x-intercept. So if we're going to have a, ne a negative value, we can't have a negative value for km. So that's why actually this, this negative is here. So that's to cancel out, so as to cancel out this x-intercept negative. So we're going to have a negative and a negative that both cancel and we'll get a positive value for km because the km value is always positive. Um, and specifically, that's because the km's units, right, are going to be equal to um, uh, substrate concentration, right? Because we, earlier we mentioned that the km is defined, or, not, or one of the sort of definitions at least of km is it's the substrate concentration at half of the Vmax. So the km's units, right, um, are substrate concentrations. So let me actually make a little, a little uh, note here. So the units, right, for each. So we have km. Its units are substrate concentration. So that could be anything. It could be like it could be micromolar. It could be molar. It could be uh, millimolar. Whatever it is. Okay. But it's some sort of concentration. Okay. So a concentration unit. What about what about Vmax? Well, Vmax is some sort of rate, right? So it could be like micro mole moles per minute. It could be molar per second. Who knows, right? As long as it's some sort of concentration over time, because it's a rate, right? So it's a rate. So it's going to be a concentration, which I'm just going to note here with the brackets. It's going to be a concentration over time. Okay. So that's a brief introduction to the weinweaver birth plot. I hope that was helpful and and pretty simple. But so the important things to keep in mind, of course, are this equation and how they sort of how it is graphed. And it's important to remember these these little equations here, so that if you're asked to calculate the Vmax or the or the Km, and you know given these intercepts, then you'll be able to do it. In addition, this slope here is equal to the Km, km over the Vmax. So if you know these intercepts, you can also find that. Um, all you have to do is find the Km, find the Vmax, and then just you know divide them and get the slope. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, in the next video, I'll talk about a few more things about the line we were plot, and then I'll provide you with an example. Hope that was helpful. See you in the next video.